at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, Uganda was in urgent need of vaccines. During the first wave in 2020, Parliament allocated 18.5 billion shillings to procure 18 million doses of vaccines through the COVAX facility. This was during the financial year 2020-2021. Additionally, government allocated 560 billion shillings to procure more COVID-19 vaccines in the 2021-2022 financial year budget. During the same financial year, Parliament appropriated 80 billion shillings to the national medical stores to procure more vaccines. Indeed, this money was fully released by the Ministry of Finance to both the Ministry of Health and to the national medical stores in installment. However, Uganda's vaccines have largely been donations from development partners amounting to about 1.3 trillion shillings. Cumulatively, Uganda has received 42 million doses of vaccines with over 90% of these donations. Additionally, the Ministry of Finance signed an MOU with the World Bank to support the Ministry of Health with a grant of $183 million to procure more vaccines and deliver them to the intended beneficiaries. This investigation seeks to follow the accountability of the money that was given to both the national medical stores and to the Ministry of Health from the government consolidated fund to procure vaccines during the first and the second wave of the pandemic, mindful that most of the vaccines have been largely donations. This investigation will be guided by these questions. Were the vaccines bought? If yes, how many vaccines were procured and at what price? Why did the Ministry of Health take over the procurement of the vaccines from the national medical stores, a body mandated by law to procure and distribute medical supplies? The investigations team has learned that the Ministry of Finance released the money to both the national medical stores and to the Ministry of Health. But was the money used to procure vaccines? Finding answers to the questions raised in this investigation has largely been difficult because of lack of access to information from the Ministry of Health and the national medical stores. We shall turn to the available information online, review the proceedings of Parliament, and we look at the documents presented by both agencies in committees and revisit archive footage to find some answers. Very much, honor colleagues. Uh, Mr. Kamavari, that is the team you are going to meet. The parliamentary committee sitting on the 3rd of July 2021 gives us some clues. While appearing before a 40 member parliamentary task force on COVID 19, the National Medical Stores General Manager Moses Kamavale told the committee that they had not received the 18.5 billion shillings, but rather the 80 billion shillings that was appropriated in the financial year 2021 2022. NMS has received an allocation of 80 billion Uganda shillings for this financial year 2021 22 for procurement of COVID vaccine. So we are waiting for instructions from cabinet because cabinet has to take a decision. The previous decision that we had for last financial year was that cabinet had made a decision that we buy the AstraZeneca vaccine from Serum Institute of India because it was the cheapest available. We went through all the processes, all the clearances, so PPDA, Solista Geno, uh, uh, PSST, but when we had concluded, then India got its own challenges and stopped giving their vaccines to the rest of the world. Now we have entered the new financial year, and they have allocated us this money, because the money for last financial year was not allocated to anyone. The one you parliament uh, appropriated went to the Ministry of Health. MPs demanded for answers and even revealed more about the money that was disbursed by government to procure the vaccines. How much money was appropriated for vaccines? 
when we were in Kololo, the Minister of Finance, designate, told us that 560 billion, which is equivalent of 160 million dollars, was appropriated, was in the estimate. They are telling us from NMS that for them they are going to procure vaccines for 80 billion for this country in this crisis. Who else has the mandate to procure vaccines? To, according to the law, the provision mandates NMS to procure. Who else and where is the, the money, the other money? The documents we have is 560 billion. You are the finance minister. I want to hear from you. What is there for this country for the vaccines? Anyways. When we are appropriating, as you are aware, I was overseeing the sector in the previous parliament. Chairman Health the Committee. And I want to agree with Mr. Kamavari that he has 80 billion as far as COVID vaccines are concerned. And the 500 or so billion that was read in the budget is not yet even in the sector. It was, I think, in finance, they are the ones planning to purchase. The vaccines that are being administered now, are they donations or we bought as a country? And if we bought as a country, please clarify, how many doses did we buy? And if we receive as donations, how many doses did we buy? All the vaccines that we have received in our country, we have, it, they do not include any one vaccine, any one dose that has been bought by government of Uganda money. All of it so far has been donation. Now the question that follows is, the money we received last year, where is the money? Honorable Chair, the money was not voted on NMS and I am constrained to answer that. Mr. Chairman, I am very sure that the tennis parliament, the tennis parliament passed money. I think around December, for buying vaccines, where is the money? We voted money in the supplementary, 18.5 billion, on vote 014. Vote 014 is Minister of Health. I remember Honorable Achei saying we need this money urgently because we need to make a deposit for the vaccine. I'm surprised that all the vaccines that we have got have all been donations. So what happened to the money that this parliament appropriated? Who is still holding the money? Has the Minister of Finance, even all these people around, Minister of Health, Minister of Finance, NMS, to be all here, such that we know who is messing up the Ugandans? Because this is suicide. Finance Minister Matia Kasaija, who also attended the meeting, seemed unsure about the money as well. No, did he release the money? No, no, no. We have not released the money at all. For? For quarter one. For vaccine. Last time. The last time? Yes. I will need to check on that one. I don't know whether it was. Yes. Mr. You know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you are really... Uh, uh, relax, let, colleagues. Let the me, minister let is let going to explain. No, no, no. The, the minister is going to, to explain. I and prepared because I have no invitation letter. I have no got instruction that come with this information, so please, I'm answering some of the, these details. It's a different for the minister. I would have come with my budget, my one charge of budget, would tell the answer. So maybe I call, if you can give me a chance, let us, maybe tomorrow, I will come with the technical officers if you give me all the questions that you want me to answer. But what I'm talking now is the mere principle. I can't tell whether this money now should have been to the, with the Minister of Health or with, with, with the medical stores. Another question then was, why did the Minister of Health take over the procurement of the vaccines and not the national medical stores, which was mandated to procure and deliver the vaccines? We, 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 last time, we, pro, we appropriated money for vaccine, didn't we? Yes. You gave that money to who? I think we must, I, I can't know, I, I don't remember the real details, but uh, if, the, if, the, if the request came under Minister of, 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 of Health, the money will go to Minister of Health. Will the Minister of Health procure the vaccine, eventually to end up with him? 
where that can be a working relationship between them and the Minister of Health. Because Minister of Health may be knowing where maybe this vaccine can be obtained from better than the National Health of, I mean, a National Drug. Yeah. So really, really the, the, they must sort the things among themselves. The, the burden should not be put on finance. They should sort out themselves. They have a sector. They know how to handle things. Then my job is to make money available for, to whoever asks for that money. Finance Minister Matia Kasaija then advised the National Medical Store boss, Moses Kamabali, to work with the Ministry of Health to harmonize the money issues. They ought to work as one body. They may have different functions, but the overall person eventually, of course, to account for all these is the minister in charge of health. So I think, he, I don't know why there is that disconnection between the two, I don't know. I, 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 that's, I, why, that's why, Mr. Chairman, what? I agree with you. Let us first listen to the Minister of Health. Then we'll be able to make a good conclusion of this matter. The Honorable Minister of Finance has been in a forum with His Excellency the President and the Honorable Minister of Health where NMS was, and he asked the Honorable Minister of Finance to get a solution for NMS for the challenges that we presented. He, he committed that he was going to get that challenge. That was July of 2020. Up to now, I have not had any written solution to that. The committee requested the Minister of Finance alongside the Minister of Health to return to the House and explain the whereabouts of the money. The committee was unable to get answers to the accountability questions of the 18.5 billion shillings, the 80 billion shillings given to the national medical stores, and to the 560 billion shillings given to the Ministry of Health. All this money was meant to procure vaccines. This conversation then went silent. Dan Kimosho, who was the deputy head of the committee, says they opted for another way to get to the bottom of the matter. It was part of our recommendations that the Auditor General should have a, a special audit and look into the utilization and management of COVID funds. The Health Committee of Parliament too started hunting for accountability of the 18.5 billion shillings six months later. During the committee sitting in January 2022, top officials from the National Medical Stores even made more revelations about their accountability. I'd also like to inform uh, honorable members, yes, 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 money was spent and we've been receiving vaccine, COVID yes. vaccine. I know within the last six months, we have received in excess of 60 billion one of that vaccine, and there is more to come. Uh, but also to put it into perspective, in the last six months, we received a total of about 533 billion worth of COVID vaccine. So you can see the component uh, that GOE funding is also providing towards the availability of, of the vaccine as well. So, MPs too were not convinced about the answers. I, I, I want to assure you the 80 billion was appropriated in this budget, not through some mental appropriation. Information, Mr. Agasha. I remember in the COVID 19 response task force, we interacted with NMS and asked about that 80 billion, and they were like, the money was not yet with them. It was with Ministry of Health, according to them, allegedly. We talked to Ministry of Health, and Ministry of Health was like, we gave the money to NMS. So if you say it was appropriated, why was it a mix-up a mix up at the time? I, I think for clarity, my colleague is correct. The AT was appropriated, released in quarter one, and it was sent. It is what is paid for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that we have received. But Honorable Ea also is alluding to another supplementary that came in the previous period also. That was also spent as well. So there have been two amounts of money which have been provided, and they have been spent. Which, which money was deposited at the COVAX facility? Is it All, paid? everything that we have re received. Um, we received instruction from the ministry that uh, the decision is that would be the best opportunity for us to get the vaccine, and we have been receiving the vaccines. Again, Parliament did not get the answers to the accountability questions. Later in the month of January 2022, the Auditor General John Muanga finalized his forensic audit into the expenditure relating to COVID-19 for the financial year 2020-2021.
Indeed, the 18.5 billion shillings is captured in his report as having been disbursed to the Ministry of Health. However, the Auditor General remained silent on the 18.5 billion shillings expenditure on procurement of vaccines. He never went deep to discuss the expenditure. He did not speak about how many vaccines were procured, at what price, and from where. The Auditor General writes, and I quote, Notwithstanding the emergency aspect that was faced by the Ministry, the allocation in the table above did not entail detailed activities that were to be undertaken under each program. Thus, I could not determine the specific envisaged outputs and activities that were to be undertaken on each of the expenditure codes. This impaired efforts to track and report on the performance of the COVID-19 interventions. I advised the accounting officer to always make an effort to indicate the details of the outputs and activities to be undertaken to facilitate proper follow-up and performance measures and reporting." End of quote. The Auditor General does not conclude in any way whether the vaccines were bought or not. This leaves the question unanswered. Was the 18.5 billion shillings used to procure vaccines? I reached out to the Health Minister, Dr. Jen Rutha Cheng, for some answers. Minister Cheng makes clear the money that the ministry has so far received to procure the vaccines. I think I would put the, 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 the contributions from government of Uganda for purchase of vaccines at nearly, let's put it at about 500 billion. 500 billion. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because we have total is about 1.89 something trillion in vaccines alone. Out of that, you can 500 billion would be government of Uganda. Yeah. But how was the 500 billion spent? Yeah. How, did it, how did you use the money? Purchase of vaccines. And that is why we are always calling upon people to get vaccinated. Look, vaccines are not cheap. I mean, if you're buying some vaccines at $7 per dose, and somebody has to receive two doses, that is $14 per person. And then others are quite expensive, more expensive. Others go for $9, just a single dose. So the vaccines are not cheap. The ministry says that they can fully account for the money. We are able to account for the uh, vaccine procurements 100% uh, because we don't procure directly. We s transmit the money through UNICEF. UNICEF is the procurement agency for vaccines nearly all over the world. Even the donations come in through UNICEF. So you cannot get money lost through UNICEF. And even the money that has been deposited that is still waiting for vaccines to be brought in is well accounted for. So I want to just appeal to Ugandans, do not assume that money can get lost through procurement of vaccines. So if the Ministry of Health procured vaccines through UNICEF, how much money was deposited on the UNICEF account to procure the vaccines under the COVAX program and at what rate per dose? Some has been deposited waiting for vaccines. You know, the majority of Ugandans prefer the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And Johnson & Johnson, whereas we've got some in donations, it is not adequate. So we are also procuring Johnson & Johnson. Majorly, the government of Uganda has procured Johnson & Johnson and Sinovac Which vaccines. Means. Yes. At what cost? Uh, per dollar a dose, I don't recall very clearly, but Johnson & Johnson is about $9 per dose, but we can still confirm to be very sure. And the Sinovac? Sinovac was about $5 per dose. Mm. But you know Johnson & Johnson, you're getting only one dose, and, and it covers you. But Sinovac, you have to get two doses. According to Jenna Cheng, there was a technical delay in the release of the funds, and therefore, government halted the payment of these funds to unicef she adds that government increased the money from just 18.5 billion shillings an equivalent of five million dollars to 39.6 billion dollars which they deposited on the unicef account that's a drop in the ocean 
Tell me you cannot it. even talk about 18.5. Actually, it was 18.5 billion, mm. 5 million US dollars. Look, here we are talking about trillions, not millions. And that was government of Uganda money. Thereafter, government went ahead to give additional 30 billion from the contingency fund, additional 80 billion through the national medical stores. And now we are getting more money coming in through grants that government has lobbied for. We checked in with UNICEF to ascertain how much money had been deposited on their account to procure vaccines and at what price. We were told that UNICEF was under strict instructions not to speak about any information on vaccine procurement. We were however referred to the Ministry of Health for answers. We requested the Ministry of Health to provide information as to how much was deposited on the UNICEF account to procure how many vaccines of Johnson & Johnson and Sinopharm. Even after several weeks of waiting, this information has not been provided. But basing on Dr. Jenna Cheng's submission, they deposited 18.5 billion shillings plus an additional 30 billion shillings plus 80 billion shillings from the national medical stores. On a separate occasion in February 2022, the minister is quoted by the media to have said, and I quote, this money was used to procure about 3 million doses of Johnson & Johnson and also procure Sinopharm vaccines that we have since distributed to the people. Basing on this information, we can conclude that government has so far bought 30 million doses of Johnson & Johnson. We cannot ascertain how many Sinopharm vaccines were bought and at what price. Minister Jenna Cheng says that they did not fully use the money on only procurement. The ministry decided to divert some of the money into other activities. Of course, don't forget the other aspects of deployment of vaccines. Deployment means taking the vaccines to the districts and giving the, the vaccines to the beneficiaries. That is another very expensive venture because we have to facilitate the health workers. They have to get an allowance of 20,000 per day. We have to care about the cold chain because the health workers have to move with the carrier bags, with ice packs. You have to think about transport, transporting the health workers to the various centers where they are supposed to vaccinate. And usually we are looking at about uh, 100 groups of health workers scattered all over a district, times 136 districts, times about six people per group. It is not a cheap activity to undertake. Acheng says that the other money was used in vaccine mobilization campaigns. In there, you have to factor in the fact that you need to mobilize people to come. So we have to facilitate the LC5 chairpersons, the cows, the village health teams to mobilize people. So COVID-19 vaccination is not a cheap undertaking. But of course, if you look at it positively, Acheng says that the Ministry of Health will account for all the money that has been given from the government consolidated fund to procure vaccines to the population. The money is well spent and uh, we will take time off if the population wants to give them accountability. Actually, the money that we have is not enough. While we wait for the Ministry of Health to open up to the public, the Ministry of Finance recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the World Bank to support the Ministry of Health with a grant of $183 billion to support the country's vaccination efforts. But with the lack of transparency and full accountability of the funds for the procurement of the COVID-19 vaccines, there are fears that the money, if not closely watched, could be misused and not accounted for. Kenneth Mwehonge is the Executive Director of the Coalition for Health Promotion and social development helps. We saw 18 billion at a certain point, 41 billion, then we saw uh, 560 um, uh, mentioned in, at, at different times, uh, but also we are seeing lots of donations coming in and uh, it's been difficult to draw a line between what's procured by government and what's donated. Uh, so it, it, it's been um, a sort of a smokescreen, uh, uh, 
understand um, uh, how these monies have been spent. Mwihonge argues that government needs to be more accountable to its citizens. We need more transparency for this additional money, the $180 million dollars uh, with support from the World Bank. So we need more transparency on this and uh, it should be made public, but also transparency involves participation of um, uh, communities and the public. So we need more of that. And, and right from planning to implementation, um, and, and, and monitoring and, and reporting. So at all those levels, now we need more transparency. Gilbert Musinguzi, an economist and programs officer at the Uganda Debt Network, faults the Auditor General and other accountability agencies for not holding the Ministry of Health and the National Medical Stores accountable. We have oversight institutions like Parliament, like uh, the IGG, we have the Auditor General and others. What role are they playing? The Auditor General's recent report was just brushing a little. It didn't delve deep into how the monies allocated to COVID was utilized. And that being a gap, we don't see even parliament, say accountability committees or budget committees or what, we don't see them raising a flag to raise the, how we are questioning. Are our MPs also failing us? He argues that corruption and misuse of public funds often slips through during times of emergency. Musinguzi says that government needs to do more on issues of accountability. If the donations for COVID were adequate to address the problem, let them come out clean and say, we already mitigated this, and therefore, the money that had been given to us, return it to the treasury and does other things, because there were supplementaries, and these supplementaries were drawn from other sectors. Let's put them back. There have been several human rights concerns on the issue of mandatory vaccination, which the Health Minister Jen Acheng is pushing for in the amendment of the public health law. Acheng says that people who refuse to be vaccinated should be punished. I, I mean, if, if you are a danger to somebody else, it is like you are subjecting that person to death. Somebody might have vaccinated, but you who has refused, you want them to die. So. Could you also be charged with attempted murder? Which is easier, the charging, go to court or pay, 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 pay the price. She adds that this will put an end to the campaigns by anti-vaxxers who advocate against vaccination. I just want Ugandans to understand the science behind vaccination. It is not about forcing people. It is about doing the right thing. I know there are so many anti-vaxxers, but how many people did we lose to COVID that kept on saying there is no COVID, don't get vaccinated? Even the most serious ones who were decampaigning vaccination and saying there is no COVID died of COVID. What if they had gotten vaccinated? However, human rights activist Kenneth Moyohongi adds that using the stick approach will not work. The anti-vaccine anti campaigners, on the other hand, have hit us hard. And um, they have valid um, um, uh, cases, uh, uh, logically, they've put uh, uh, across, uh, given the history of vaccination and the history of these clinical trials. Uh, I think now we need to change that approach um, and, and, and ensure that we are countering vaccine hesitancy through empowering people with correct information um, uh, but also uh, massively, massively and aggressively uh, mobilizing communities uh, to utilize these um, uh, uh, vaccines. The August Assembly will have the final say on the matter through a vote. If passed into law, anyone who does not get vaccinated is liable to being imprisoned for six months or pay four million Ugandan shillings or both. As we wait for the final say from the legislators, the Minister of Health says that they are far away from their target of vaccinating the entire population by 2023. Solomon Serwanja, AIJ Unveils.